Hey Tarosphere, it's Holly from Kip Cog Creatures, and I am here with Ethany's 31 Days of Tarot Challenge, Day 3! <sighs> Count them, 1, 2, 3. I've consistently done something for 3 days. Are we forming a habit? I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> But today's day is, um, or today's prompt rather, is top five Oracle decks of 2017. And again, bulk of my collection was acquired in 2017, so it was a really hard decision, but I've pared it down. And we're going to start with number one. The deck that is the best one, I think, is the Rebel deck. This is a no punches pulled and appropriate screaming from my bird right now. Hang on. This is a no punches pulled deck, so... If you are looking for a deck that's going to love you and hug you and tell you it'll be okay and it's all right to sit on the couch and eat 40 pints of haagen and feel your feels, um, but and like wallow in it, then you are looking for not this deck. Um, lots of swearing, lots of kicks in the butts, but it always has the best messages the it's just it's so every every time I do a pull it's pertinent I use it every day sometimes twice a day and it is just I cannot even begin to tell you how magical this deck is and it's a double-sided deck there is a you know a message on the front and a message on the back and it always makes me laugh it always kind of makes me be like all right I'll cut my own shit like best deck ever all right, so deck number two would be the, all right, you know, we'll go with this one. This is the Cosmos Tarot and Oracle by Light Gray Art Labs. And it should say the Cosmos Oracle and Oracle by Light Gray Art Labs. And I absolutely love this deck. It is not a tarot deck, which is why it is in this video instead of in yesterday's video. So this is a 78 card system plus an additional 22 cards that have been shoehorned into a Rider weight. But the readings and the artwork are just to die for. It is a collaborative deck. Each card is done by a different person. Each card has um, keywords on the bottom and it pictures a different um, astral body. Can we get it there? Come on. No, we can't. I can't get it to focus. Oh, well. So again, it's a beautiful, the cardstock is amazing. It's totally 100% worth the purchase. If you don't already own this deck, add it to your collection. Um, readings are always pertinent for whatever reason. And it has helped me expand um, meanings and understandings for regular tarot, um, regular rider weight. So I mean, it does it like it does tie into tarot, but it is not tarot. It's totally an oracle, but it is one that you should own. So <clears throat> number three would be another astral theme deck or a space theme deck, which would be the Compendium of Constellations by Black and the Moon. Um, didn't think I was really just actually I was really disappointed when I got this deck because I wanted it to use in conjunction with her Akana of our of astrology. And look how much differently sized it is. I thought I was going to be able to combine it and make a mega deck, but I wasn't. Um, that being said, so like I kind of hated it for like the first month that I had it. And then I started using it and I was like, well, shit, this is a great little deck. Um, each card is a constellation and a keyword. 100% beautiful. I think there's about 90 cards in here. Yeah, 90 cards. So you're never... Um, it, it's, it's never, it never gets old. I, I find with some Oracle decks that are like 40 cards and under, they tend to get a little stale, but this has enough variety and where it's just one keyword and there's no, um, there's no booklet that comes with it. I find that like, there's just plenty of room for interpretation. And my favorite way to use this deck actually is to fan them out face down. And then I use my pendulum to select the card for me. And I always find that when I do it that way, um, the messages are not only pertinent, but they're kind of like, okay. And then it's cards I would never, it, it's being chosen from places I would never choose a card for myself either. I always pull uh, one from the bottom, one from the middle, and one from the top when I do readings. And this is like going, the pendulum makes me go all over the place. And then the message is always super pertinent. So I don't know, creepy, but it is what it is. Damn you tarot, this is why nobody likes you. 
All right, so the th fourth deck is the Inner Star Oracle deck. And I kickstarted this in 2017, received it in 2017, like a couple of months later. Again, another, it is no mistake that I put well-oiled uh, Kickstarter decks into my top fives because that is super important. And there's nothing that makes you feel better than supporting an artist. And like, you know, there's just, just a small indie like project. There's nothing, it doesn't, it, it, like it feels amazing. And then to have that project also be run professionally and um, just awesomely enough where you get your product on time or with a very short delay and the finished product is great quality and the reward tiers were awesome, the stretch goals were awesome, the artist was awesome, to have that all come together, it, like it is the best feeling in the world. So anyway, Inner Star Oracle is a, um, I want to say it's like a 40, 50, doesn't say how many I don't think. I want to say it's like a 65 card Oracle deck. I could be wrong. Um, and it is 100% beautiful. She's got two editions of it. The magic edition is the one with the background images, which you 100% want. <laughs> you want it. Um, and then she's got, um, I think it's just the, the simple edition where it's just the pattern that she's got drawn here. And that's a great one for traveling and stuff if you don't want to ruin this. But like, honestly, the layers of images underneath each of the um, sacred geometry drawings just makes the deck. I get more out of the images underneath than I do out of the actual design that she's got going on. Um, the colors are bright. The phrases are pertinent. They're not too self-helpy. Um, they're not too... They're not too... Um, I hate to like I hate to say it, but they're not too like indigo childs. Um, although if you want if you wanted to add an indigo child, um, you know, star seed kind of a deck to your collection, this would be the one that I would tell you to add. Um, I like it even better than I like the Star Child Tarot. But it's it's it's, it's a great deck. You totally need to add it. But I find that sometimes with this kind of aesthetic, like the crystal-y um, you know, flower crowns and whatnot, like that kind of, that kind of, um, like that kind of aesthetic. Usually what happens is the deck, the phrases are way too self-helpy and they make not a lot of sense. And that just drives me batshit crazy. Um, but this deck is definitely way more like, honestly, for a card, for a deck that's so like up in the air and like that kind of like, like I have a hard time describing it, but it's got a certain feeling to it. And it's definitely doesn't feel like, I don't know, it's, it's like it's up here. Like there's definitely some high vibrations coming off of this deck, but for a deck that that's vibrating so high, it's very grounded. So if you are a very grounded person, you're going to have trouble using a deck like Sacred Creators, or you're going to have trouble using a deck like Star Child Tarot. That being said, this deck I have had no problem with. So this is for the people who are grounded that want to be less grounded, but need a deck to that's less grounded to be grounded, if that makes any sense at all. But that's the best way I can think of to describe it. And then last but not least, um, not least at all actually, is a deck by a girl who is impossible to hate. <laughs> she is, and coming from me, believe me, if there was a way to hate her, I'd have found it by now. Um, her name is Melly Test, and she is the creator of the Dancing Unicorn Oracle. And Melly, I've said it a thousand times if I have said it once. For the love of God and all that is holy, please do a Kickstarter for this deck on, like, with production, with the production value it deserves. Game Crafter is awesome. This is a Game Crafter deck, you guys. So you need to go in knowing that you are, it's, um, when you purchase it on, you purchase it on Game Crafter. So know that it is Game Crafter quality, um, but this deck deserves to be picked up by Harper Elixir. Uh, it deserves to be picked up. It deserves the same production quality as Inner Star Oracle. I mean, it is just 100% beautiful. Each of the images is hand painted. So Dancing Unicorn Oracle, large size, thank thankfully, um, but this makes this deck kind of expensive on Game Crafter. Um, Melly went with the larger size cards. She went with the better quality cardstock. She went with the two part box and it comes with a little booklet inside to help you interpret the cards. And then it also um, comes with a, like I think it's a 90 page PDF download where she expands on the meanings of the cards. 
and then it also she's just like she's she's jam-packed a lot of stuff into this deck some of it I don't understand or don't drive with but that doesn't mean that it won't drive for somebody else she's included um, what's called Anahata code assisting frequencies and powerful sacred activations so I'm not far enough along my spiritual path to even know what either of those are. I have been using them as affirmations. Um, and then I don't know what an Anahata code is. I would have to look into that. Um, but anyway, this is the Dancing Unicorn Oracle. Each one is hand painted. Um, the backgrounds are also hand painted. She does a lot of mixed media painting. And if ever there was a hug deck that you needed to own, it would be this. This is just the most amazing deck. This is kind of, this is like the fun. So if Rebel Deck had a sibling um, that was a little less, like this person swears a little more, but is still down, like, so Rebel Deck swears a little more. And this is the younger sister that hasn't quite learned about swearing yet, but is still down to party. Um, <laughs> it's just, it's so cute. It's an amazing deck. The it's just so inspirational. I use it as an inspiration deck. Like if I'm feeling shitty and I just like can't handle the punch in the face that rebel deck is going to give me. And I just kind of need a little pick me up and like a, like I just need a unicorn. This is the only unicorn deck I own, by the way, you guys, um, there are several decks out there with unicorns in them. And this is the only, so this should speak volumes to you about the fact that I own it. Um, it's just so good. And I had been hot about buying it for a little while because I couldn't justify like, uh, it's Game Crafter, and that's kind of a lot of money. I want to say this deck was like 50 bucks, um, and I still bought it anyway. It just really spoke to me. I, I do like this one. <laughs> this is this. So there's a few puns in there, which you you have to appreciate a good pun. And I follow Melly on Instagram, and I am secretly a huge fan. Well, not secretly, but I am a huge fan of her, and she is amazing. So you need to add the Dancing Unicorn Oracle to your collection. You will not be sorry. And that is it for my top five decks. I do have two honorable mentions, two honorable mentions, and that would be the Amethyst Oracle, which teams with the Idiosyncra deck. Um, didn't quite make it because a lot of people already have it, know about it. And it would be like, oh, if there was a top five Tarot Oracle deck pairs, like it would have made the list. Um, but totally adorable artwork. Like it's just super duper cute almost made my top five, but I decided, um, the top five were more important, but again, pertinent readings, super awesome. I think it's, um, make playing cards is the one who, um, you know, they're the, they're the ones who are responsible for printing the deck. It's decent quality. It goes really well with, um, like I said, idi idiosyncra and really cute readings with that. And then the other one, super fun, and it has absolutely nothing to do with anything is this is the longest video I think I've filmed for this challenge so far, by the way, um, is food fortunes. Honestly, I cannot get enough of food fortunes. It is just, if ever there was a parody deck, I think this is more of a parody deck than it is like a really good, um, well, it's a really good Oracle deck, but the way that you're supposed to use it is you're supposed to pick the King of Mains. Mm -hmm, that's what I'm talking about. Um, the way that you're supposed to use it is to help you decide what it is you're going to eat for dinner. And it is just so good. <gasps> Falafel. Um, so good. But yeah, it's it's really funny, and I know some people really do use it for readings because you can get and in, you can get intuitive readings off of just about anything. But I really love that it kind of it pokes a little bit of fun at Rider Waite. It helps you decide what you're going to eat for dinner if you're you know a big fan of going to the I don't care bar and grill. Um, like, what are you going to eat? Uh, where do you want to go? I don't care. Um, and it's just it's another it's a really cute deck to just add to your collection. So anyway, that is my top five, and I will see you guys tomorrow for top five tarot books. Bye, Tarosphere.